Thank you, James. He goes forward like that. <laughs> Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So, as the name of this video suggests, we're here at another reservoir where the water levels have gone very low. This is Derwent Reservoir and I think this is the best of the lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is really, cool. really good. Some of the it's features amazing. that it's revealed are just incredible. Yeah. And the place is amazing. Well, he's very excited. I've been, been throwing sticks for him, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of that weight. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to look at some of the features that have been revealed. Now, you might think he's hammering this a bit in here, all these reservoirs that are like, you know, but it's a bit of a rare moment. I know this has happened before. I think that it last happened in 2018, and it does happen, but, you know, it's going to rain soon. If we have a few wet summers, we won't see this stuff for a few years. So I thought I'd show it you while it's on show. Behind the camera is some fa fantastic features, but there's even more across the other side. So without further ado, let's go and take a look. So you can see how deep we are down in the reservoir here. You see there? I hope it's working out with the wind, so I'll have to voice over. But two villages were buried here, the village of Derwent, and there's another one and I can't remember it because I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I can't even Google it, but I did read up on it last night. I'll put the name down here. But uh, take a look at this. I don't even know what this is. Tarmac here that obviously ran this way to whatever this was here. Um, Post sticking out there. What have I just seen? I've just seen, oh yeah, remains of a wall there. Can you see the remains of the old brick wall? This is the thing that always gets me. Can you imagine this thing has been buried for so long, but the latch is still on it there? Because the sun's over there, so it's in shade, but the latch is still there. So what was that? We don't quite know, do we? The base of something. And if you look, we've got to watch where we're walking. There's some post sticking out there. Over here, there's all sorts, but we're going to have to walk over the other side of the reservoir in a bit. That's incredible over there. Well, let's have a look at this. <laughs> I mean, what is that all about? Piece of uh, granite there sticking out, incredible, isn't it? And then you'll be notice that thing over there. That is incredible. So, where are we this week? Well, we're just in Derbyshire in the uh, the Pennine Hills, another place that's easy to get to from where I live here in Manchester. We're just here for reference. So let's zoom in a bit more and we'll take a look at the reservoirs we're looking at. There you go, centre screen there. Those are the reservoirs we're looking at. So we've got Lady Bower Reservoir here and this reservoir is called Derwent Reservoir and that's our point of interest. When they flooded the valley to make this reservoir, there was two villages that were completely submerged underwater. Familiar story, isn't it? We've looked at this before. We're going to start the journey here, just near this woodland here. Look at some features here. Take a look, uh, look at the Derwent Dam here very quickly. And then we're going to go over to this side here to look at the remains of Derwent Village or some of the features in Derwent Village. Now, there was another village that was completely flooded here called Ashupton. That is now uh, submerged in the depths of the reservoir. We didn't get down here, so I don't know quite what's, what's uh, revealed. This is Ashupton Viaduct, the only reminder we've got of the old Ashupton village here. But our main focus this, uh, this week is Derwent Village, this area here. So let's crack on with the video. Just okay here on the mud, although we're sinking in a bit. <laughs> Should have worn my wellies. Look at that. This has actually been uh, seen before. I think this came into view in 2018 because that was quite a warm summer as well. Uh, I'm guessing some kind of farm building, although I will try and find out uh, what well it built. is. It's what? Well built. It's well, what is he saying? It's well built. It is well built. Look at the slates on top. Yeah, still there. Still there. Um, so, James and I are just tentatively going out to it. We've got to look inside, don't we? Yeah. Right, so he's getting your shot. Thank you. 
if we take a look there just below the water you can see the shadows there of what I'm wondering was maybe some sort of gate another wall maybe another building or something like that but there's definitely been something there if it goes any lower that will reveal itself won't it what was it like inside peaceful was it it was nice it just you could hear like the water coming in and out it was nice it's, it's cool it's very windy so we're gonna walk now down the reservoir to the other side because there's more features on the other side so we're heading down there towards the uh you may see a bridge over there in the distance we're going to go round the top of the reservoir and over to the other side where there's more exciting features One job to do was to find the way back to the road and you've made a balls up. It's there. No, it's not there. You just it's seen. It's right there. You, it's literally. You seen I, things. Yeah. They came <laughs> off. Is this in a tree? They, they came yeah. off the path too early. You see the tree there. Blaming me. And there's yeah. a car right there. That's exactly These trees are a bit samey. Built like a castle. Fantastic, isn't it? built in the days where they wanted it to look good and be aesthetically pleasing and just quirkiness absolute quirkiness look at the turrets on it absolutely amazing now i've drawn it for you well there's a sign down there that says you read my mind no drones um and there's lots of guys working down there there's lots of works going on so I probably better not drone it really else i'll get in trouble little stream running into the reservoir when it's normally full but I don't know looking at this it looks like the water may be normally much higher but it's much lower and already a beautiful beautiful old bridge has been revealed just behind the camera and that's obviously had a little little track along the top going to the old village or something like that absolutely an idyllic country scene Well, you can see there how the stone goes that dark colour when it's been submerged yeah. underwater. Yeah. Is there any mason's marks on the side? You know, like yeah, yeah, mason's marks. This is that sort of thing I usually miss, and then. Uh, well, it's not the common stuff. Somebody will say there's a mason's mark you missed there, but no, I can't see any off the top of my head. Right, so what we'll do is look at the wall there as well. See the stone wall there? We're going to walk over there that way because over there is even more. Look at the tree stumps there. And they stay, they spend most of the time submerged underwater then. Are they hollowish? Oh, <laughs> they yeah, sound it, but then inside you've got all that. Second bridge here, definitely, you reckon? Yeah. And this is definitely underwater now, this is definitely underwater. Uh, you can definitely tell this is normally submerged can you imagine a little tree line valley uh, with the water course in that meandered here down into the the valley down there that was that is now the reservoir so you can see where we are we're now on the opposite side of the reservoir so if this goes any lower we'll no doubt be able to see those uh, gate posts there that are sticking out of the water things down there See all the buildings there can't you and um, this is a sill look at that there's a sill there 
of an old building. A bit of dressed stone. That is just unbelievable. All there. There's, the light really isn't doing us any favours here, but the sun's getting a bit low in the sky. My God, look at that, there's a window there. That's sick. Look at this. Oh, look nice. at that. Yeah. Look at that, that's been part of a, a quite a nice building that. Isn't it? The walls that have gone dark. Look at that window. <laughs> no way. Look at that. That is incredible. Isn't it? That is, that is, that's what makes this journey worthwhile. Yeah. Like Unbelievable. Well, look at that. What gets me is the window ledges. Look at the window ledges. <laughs> and the dressed stone. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go and look at this thing. So I wondered what this was. From a, on the pictures it's hard to work out the size of it. Um, but it's obviously a gate post. Um, obviously a gate post. I thought, <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought it was the top of a church. But obviously it's not. But uh, that's been a grand gate post that to some building there is a date on the side but i think that won't be that's what that's probably graffiti that wow well that is a wow a definite wow in it uh, and then we've got an old wall here look at look how beautiful that is You can see under the waters there how the wall goes. See the wall? So it carries on under water. Liam, you found the name of the brick, what have you found? It looks like it says Finally Iron Co near Leeds. Near Leeds? Near Leeds. Oh that's an old See there. Someone's bathroom? <laughs> Maybe. This is just unbelievable. This is like this is like a row of houses, isn't it? Yes. Hey? Where? Oh my god, yeah. That was someone's cupboard under the stairs, weren't it? I don't know if I've got a good shot of that. The light is in your way, it's proper. So here we've got a staircase. So this house staircase, and the reason we know it's a staircase is because it's in the that's the cupboard under the stairs. It's now flooded out. That's your pantry. And again, all the bricks have gone that dark colour. We've been underwater for all those years. Big bolt on the outside there. And the bolt's rusted there. That's been somewhere, hasn't it? So what exactly are we looking at here? What are all these ruins? Well initially I thought it was the remains of perhaps a row of houses from the village but turns out I was very wrong. So in a moment I'm going to show you the maps to show you just exactly what we're looking at and it's quite fascinating. So let's zoom into that area and what we'll do is we'll drain away the waters to see what used to be there 
courtesy of the old maps from National Libraries of Scotland. There you go. Look at that. So the village of Derwent is what we're looking at. Just going to zoom in a little bit more. So those splendid remains here that I thought were may have been a, a, a row of houses were actually Derwent Hall. There you go. I've got some pictures in a bit to show you of Derwent Hall. Look at this, a fish pond. That's long since gone. I think the fish in that pond have found a bigger pond to swim in now. This is the River Derwent. Now the first building we looked at, the one that James walked towards, I'm guessing was something to do with Bridge M Farm, but possibly a farm building here. Obviously we had to cross the reservoir by going all the way up here and round to this side, and we're now looking at the remains of Derwent Hall. But we came in this way via the vicarage. Remember when I showed you uh, we went through the old, those two old gate posts and we came in via the old vicarage here. The weir, the weirs are marked and I think that footbridge, that little bridge that I've shown you may have been this footbridge, although to me it seemed more like it was up here. But th those are the weirs, I showed you the weir, footbridge here. I'm guessing this, this is the bridge that was revealed. The little river did meander around a bit and obviously it then joined the River Derwent here just after the school. So there you go, yeah, Derwent Hall. So what do we know about Derwent Hall? Well, I'll give you some uh, little bit of information on that. But I want you to just also note this. St. James and St. John's Church, uh, that's there. Because there's a, a very interesting story about that as well. Some of you may know the story, but I will tell you the story about that. Because that, that is absolutely fascinating. But anyway, let's go over to Derwent Hall. What do we know about Derwent Hall? There you go, it's quite an impressive place, wasn't it? Quite beautiful. According to Historic England, it was built in 1672. Built of local stone on a H-shaped plan. The windows on the ground floor were a uh, traditional Jacobean style. We've seen those windows, haven't we? Anyway, um, when the nobility moved out of the place, the water company bought the building. And in its last guise from 1932, it was a, a youth hostel. And it was opened by the Prince of Wales at the time, who later became um, King Edward VIII, the one that abdicated and had a certain penchant for an American lady. I'm sure the Youth Hostels Association is extremely fortunate in having this fine old house and grounds at their disposal. Now, remember me telling you about the church when I looked at the map? Well, I've still got to tell you the fascinating story of what happened to it, so stay tuned. Anyway, it's a bit chilly. Well, I'm, I'm all right. I'm quite, you know, <laughs> I exercise lots, so I'm all right. Are you cold? <laughs> exercise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, That's nice. Liam's carrying something with him. What do you reckon? Brew? Very Brew. much needed. Brew. <laughs> Open your bag of delights. What are we on? Um, I believe there's some French chocolatey bun. You would know because you didn't bring them. I, I you saw them because I brought them. I've been, I've been baking. I <laughs> yeah. saw them. Keep it down. <laughs> Why? To keep the heat. And you've remembered everything I've taught you, haven't this you? Is, um... <sighs> Do you have this trouble when you bring the kids out? First, it's my coat going off without me. Now it's the kids going <laughs> off at me. Now I've had to get these again. Because last time they were really nice, mm. weren't they? I do like a bit of brioche pastry. Thanks, Bob. And we've kind of earned it. We, should we have half each? No. Uh, one each? One each. Mm. Oh. oh, what? Oh, yes. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you reckon these, what are they call brioche the swirls, yeah. chocolate brioche swirls, available at our. <laughs> <laughs> Available at Aldi. Uh, chocolate brass swirls or Portuguese tarts? Because they're kind of like number one at the moment, aren't they? Portuguese tarts, like I said, yeah, they're definitely. over too quick there. Portuguese tarts, are, they're over too quick. Flaky. A bit like you in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't. Um, <laughs> Flaky, pastry. Yeah. Well, this is just nice. These seem to last longer, more cakey and doughy, aren't they? Mm. 
very like soft doughy. And they do There's like a moist doughy bread. How incredible is that? I don't know what we're looking at there. But it's a beautiful piece of dressed stone. Anyone, any guesses on what them are? I wonder if there's something to do with the uh, a window closing mechanism or, some, mechanism or something like that. Or the proper setting to the stone. You know, like, you'd, like a roller shutter or something. Well, you see the corner of the building there. And uh, showing you the dressed stone. Another one here. Look at that. Just look at that. So what became of Derwent Hall? Well, the contractors that were responsible for building the dams and all the work in the area actually demolished Derwent Hall and they stripped it out and, and a lot of the assets were sold off. Well, what became of the village? Well, that too was demolished, including the church. As you can see here, it's in ruins. But curiously, they left the church tower standing. And as you can see there, it was poking its head just above the water. Absolutely fantastic. Now, there were reports of people in low water swimming out to it and um, climbing up the tower. And here it is a picture of it in uh, another drought in 1947. The, the church tower completely exposed. It drew crowds, lots and lots of crowds, and it started to spook. This swimming out to it and climbing it and all the crowds that used to come during low water spooked the water authorities. They they didn't like it. They thought it was dangerous. They, they It caused traffic congestion, all sorts of things. So, in 1947, December, they decided to dynamite the tower and... Unfortunately, it was blown to bits. So as we head up the valley and upstream on the River Derwent, we head towards something called Water Houses, where we find more remains. Cellars or the remains of cellars, gateposts, again with the latches still on them, which I always find fascinating. More cellars, probably cupboards under the stairs again, where people kept the groceries. Wooden lintels that form little windows. And what looks to be some kind of grate, probably a liftable grate. Look at the black tiles there. So there you go. And that's how the village of Derwent had to sacrifice itself to ensure drinking water for the ever demanding cities of Sheffield, Nottingham and Leicester. But looking on the bright side, the area is still very beautiful and occasionally, after a dry summer, we get to see the ghostly remains of Derwent Village. What can you see, James? The last village of Scaramusk. Scaramusk, Scaramusk, can you do the fandango? Very, very frightening, very, very... Oh, Galileo! 